Channel 5 serving the best place on earth. Now, Eyewitness News is everywhere. From the North Bay and San Rafael, investigators shut down four gas stations. They suspect customers may have been swindled. From the South Bay and Sunnyvale, these third graders witness a moment they will remember for the rest of their lives. And from the East Bay and Berkeley, they watch and cheer as John Glenn writes another chapter in space history. Good evening, I'm Dana King. And I'm Dave McElhatton. We'll have much more on the John Glenn shuttle launch and how the Bay Area played a part in this historic day, but first, the race for governor. It's heating up as Democratic candidate Gray Davis sprints ahead with a stunning new lead. Our political reporter, Hank Plant, joins us now with the latest developments. Hank? Big one, Mac. Dana, this is a commanding lead by Gray Davis in tonight's exclusive KPIX field poll. It shows Davis with a whopping 14-point lead over Dan Lundgren. It's his biggest lead ever since this all began. The pictures tell the story. Democrat Gray Davis campaigning in San Francisco's Chinatown yesterday evening, acting like a winner and swamped by supporters and the media. A stark contrast to Republican Dan Lundgren the day before in San Jose, met by a couple of lonely photographers and reporters and anticipating the upcoming field polls results. Best thing I can figure out is that Gray Davis is already um, you know, taking measurements for the drapes in the uh, governor's office, and I hope he continues to do that from now until Election Day. Uh, there are others that have been able to do that in the past, but they've never been called governor. But here's tonight's news. Gray Davis now leads Dan Lundgren by 14 points. Davis has 53 percent, Lundgren 39 percent, with only 4 percent undecided. Compare that to last March, before the June primary, when people wrote Davis off and Lundgren led him by 1%, 42 to 41. It's a different Gray Davis out on the campaign trail these days. Did you expect to be this far out in front? You know, you never know where you really are until the people vote on Election Day, but I'm happy that every poll has had us ahead. Most polls have us on the rise. They sure do, showing Davis leads strongly in almost every part of the state, even the Central Valley, where Lundgren was counting on. Only the counties south of L.A., where Lundgren is from, are still favoring their hometown man in the poll. Now, nobody is writing Dan Lundgren off, of course, but Davis's lead is so strong now that many other Democrats down the ticket are now counting on some carryover votes from Davis's strength. All right, finally, uh, one last note on the campaign tonight. You know, we're all getting a lot of uh, campaign flyers and these slate cards in the mail. Here's one I want to show you from San Francisco Democratic consultant Robert Barnes. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, my. Guess it's in the spirit of Halloween. <laughs> Politics is a nasty business. Yes. Is this part of the uh, stretch drive game plan? You know, it's interesting, this stretch over the next couple of days, I've been looking at some of the ads that are coming in. You'll see them airing beginning this weekend. They're all nice now. All the candidates are being so sweet now. It's like a hit and run. <laughs> Forget what we told you before. We're all nice people. All right. Thank you, Hank. All right. Well, our other big story tonight, 36 years after making space history, astronaut John Glenn is back in orbit tonight. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery with a crew of six astronaut heroes and one American legend. He was the first American in orbit in 1962, and now at the age of 77, John Glenn is the world's oldest space traveler. More than 300,000 spectators gathered in Florida to watch the launch, which was nearly perfect. Eight. Discovery's we departure was 19 and a half minutes Five, late and was marred four, slightly when an 18 by 22 nine, inch panel eight. fell from the shuttle and struck an engine start. moments before Five. liftoff. Now you can four, see the door in the highlighted three, area. Two. Engineers believe it was the drag chute door or its covering. They say it poses no risk to the crew or the mission. As for Senator Glenn tonight, so far so good. America's oldest astronaut spoke with Mission Control a few hours into the flight, and he said everything is A-OK. -okay. Well, enjoying the show is right. This is beautiful. The best part is that do a trite old statement, zero G, and I feel fine. I don't know what happens on down the line, but today is beautiful and great, and Hawaii is just, I just can't even describe it. Another crew member then piped in saying that Glenn has been smiling since the flight began. 
Coming up in just a few minutes in tonight's Eye on Technology, we'll have more on the eight days of experiments the astronauts will be conducting, including studies for NASA Ames and Onizuka Air Base right here in the Bay Area. Dana? Well, two of the astronauts flying alongside John Glenn are from the Bay Area. 37-year-old Scott Perezinski's hometown is Palo Alto. He received his bachelor's degree in biology and graduated with honors from Stanford Medical School. He is serving as a mission specialist, flight engineer, and space Walker. 43-year-old Stephen Robinson graduated from Camp Alindo High in, in Moraga. He received one degree from UC Davis and two from Stanford, including a doctorate. He is also a mission specialist. In Berkeley, those who remembered Glenn's first launch today watched with joy and excitement. Seniors at the North Berkeley Senior Center applauded the launch of a man from their generation and all around the Bay Area today, old and young alike, watched the history-making moment. Len Ramirez reports. They cheered for the shuttle, for John Glenn, and for themselves. These third graders from Vargas Elementary School in Sunnyvale were especially excited because a little piece of each of them was along for the historic ride. A poster with signatures from the students and others from around the country was loaded onto a CD-ROM, which was taken aboard the shuttle. Everybody in the school did it, and now it's in space! The children watched at a space exhibit center at Lockheed Martin. It was also a proud day for the Bay Area space contractor because the shuttle carries a piece of Lockheed Martin equipment in its payload bay. It's a special cooling system for the Hubble Space Telescope. Basically, the equipment allows uh, us to cool an instrument down so that we can reach out further in space and we uh, look at the, uh, are able to see objects further out. <laughs> They were also proud of the Palo Alto Airport, not so much for the oldest man in space, but for one of the newest astronauts on board, Stephen Robinson. Robinson, a mission specialist, first learned to fly an airplane with instructor Ann Elsbaugh of the West Valley Flying Club in the early 80s. Ann's a real basic uh, tailwheel pilot, and the basics of flying he learned here. At NASA Ames Research Center in Mountain View, the Bay Area Space Connection goes all the way back to the dawn of space travel. One exhibit getting a lot of attention today is this Mercury capsule, similar to the one John Glenn orbited the Earth in 36 years ago. How small and cramped it is for a human being to go and spend that much time in it. It is a relic from an earlier, simpler time, but as much as things have changed, one thing remains the same. As John this Glenn proved today, America still has heroes. On the Peninsula, and Ramitas, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Coming up, a San Francisco taxi driver is found shot to death. His cab and meter still running. Plus, the fire department puts out a warning about keeping your children safe this Halloween. Tonight on Evening Magazine, just in case you weren't able to go to the exotic erotic ball last weekend, we give you a chance to see the Bay Area exposed. That's only on Evening Magazine, tonight at 7. Closed captioning is brought to you by Sleep Train Mattress Centers, your ticket to a better night's sleep. It's the best way to discover the Bay Area online. Just click Yahoo on the Fix page, the best place in cyberspace. You're watching Dave McElhatton, Dana King, Weather Everywhere with Brian Sussman, and Sports with Drew Soysher. Eyewitness News is everywhere. Police tonight are searching for whoever gunned down a taxi cab driver early this morning. From San Francisco, the driver was shot to death about 1.30 this morning in the city's Visitation Valley District. His cab's engine and its meter were still running. Police say they don't know why the cabbie was shot. Other drivers say it makes them worry. Pretty rough out here. A lot of things happen, you know. Nobody ever backs us up on anything. We're pretty much on our own out here. Remember one year, there's about eight was killed between here and Oakland across the bay. Something you always think about, especially at night. People who live in Visitation Valley say it's already difficult to get a cab there. And with today's shooting, they say it will be even harder. Some Bay Area customers may have been paying more than they should at the gas pump. From the North Bay in San Rafael, authorities say four Marin County stations allegedly charge customers premium prices for regular gasoline. The state and county shut down some pumps at the IGS stations. The customers we talked to were outraged. I think that's unfair. Would you be buying gas here from no, now on? No, no, I wouldn't. No, I would not. I think that's horrible, but uh, 
I should have thought the state would have closed them down completely for misrepresentation. The district attorney's office says no charges have been filed yet, but it is investigating the case. Tonight, an annual reminder, important information for parents about keeping your children safe this Halloween. The Piedmont Fire Department says parents need to be aware of the dangers of flammable costumes. Last Halloween, a 12-year-old Texas girl died when her costume caught fire. Their children are burned, uh, sometimes quite severely, by costumes, oftentimes made of vinyl, which will catch and melt onto the skin when they burn also recommends children carry flashlights and wear reflectors on their costumes and he adds that parents should be sure to check their children's candy before allowing them to eat it the winds from hurricane mitch have died down but tonight the flood waters are rising calm day about the bay area but up in the high sierra today ho 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 snow weather next Eyewitness News is everywhere. Now, news where you live. In San Francisco, a sidewalk collapse injures two workers. The accident happened about 11 this morning near the corner of Turk and Octavia. Two construction workers suffered leg injuries when a sidewalk collapsed and fell into a trench where they were working. On the peninsula, Stanford University officials call on China to release a scholar jailed on spying charges. Wad Di works at Stanford Center for International Security and Cooperation. China claims he was revealed, or actually he had revealed its military secrets. But Stanford says the information in question has been public for a while now. In the North Bay, Nevada officials give the go-ahead for a new hospital. Construction on the $31 million project gets underway next month. The acute care hospital will be located off the Roland exit of Highway 101. From the East Bay, police nab a streaker in Lafayette. Police say 22-year-old Gabrielle Cotta ran through the gym at Akalanes High School wearing nothing but boots, then swung from the basketball hoop in the presence of the girls' basketball team. Cotta was arrested yesterday as he tried to start his car next to the gym. In the South Bay, a high-tech program in Santa Clara County is being used to screen potential school employees. The sheriff's office is now able to use a computer to scan fingerprints instead of the old-fashioned ink pad routine. This cuts down on the result time from six weeks to just 72 hours. A splendid day around the bay, weather everywhere, and some of it frozen up in the high country. What's going on? Yeah, it's really there? amazing. I mean, today, nice weather around the Bay Area, and yeah, you're right, up in the high country, check it out. Snow. Ugh. Not just a dusting, but we're talking several inches of snow falling. They had to take out the plows. These pictures are taken at Mount Rose. They've got a great ski resort that's on the Nevada side of the range, but I'll tell you what, snow, and on radar, you can see a half day's worth of radar in about six seconds here. But the showers up and down most of the Sierra range. Right now, we're seeing a few scattered showers well south of Yosemite. But make a note, tonight the snow level down that way about 5,000 feet. And lingering snow showers remain in the forecast tonight and even tomorrow in the high country, including the Tahoe area. Temperatures around the Bay Area today in the 60s, just about everywhere, ranging from a 61 in San Francisco to a 69 in Vallejo today. Oddly enough, the high temperature, South Lake Tahoe, came early in the day, 50 degrees there, 70 in Los Angeles today. We're watching the weather out in the Pacific. That could be the latter half of our weekend sitting out there. Let's get to it one step at a time. We'll begin with our Bay Vision computer forecast. Check it out beginning right now when we're pretty much on the clear side. Some haze settling in. We'll see some high clouds drifting through overnight, and that's about it. As far as tomorrow morning goes, it's going to be one of the cooler mornings we've seen this season, 30s and 40s about the Bay Area tomorrow morning. Once we get past the morning commute, temperatures will warm nicely. And again, all we're talking about are some high clouds drifting through every now and again. So let's go ahead and we'll check out some temperatures for tomorrow. We'll begin on the peninsula and San Francisco. High in San Francisco, 64. Pacifica, 63 tomorrow. 
Redwood City with 67 degrees. Temperature is a skosh warmer tomorrow than today, so we'll actually see a few 70s popping up. Petaluma, for example, 70 degrees. Santa Rosa, 70 degrees. 71 Sonoma. High temperature tomorrow in Concord, 71 degrees. Livermore, 69. Pleasanton, 71. Alameda should see 66. Same thing in Oakland. Orinda, 68 degrees. Mountain View tomorrow afternoon with a 67. 68 for San Jose tomorrow. Los Gatos will check in with a high temperature of 70 degrees. It's your Friday weather. Not bad at all. I think it might be a little bit warmer on Saturday. Sunday will cloud things up and bring in at least a chance of rain Sunday north of the Golden Gate. Here's your getaway forecast. Doing some traveling this weekend. Wine country showers possible Sunday. That's the way we'll word it for right now. Monterey Bay, mostly sunny and mild. Up in the high Sierra, showers possible Sunday. Saturday should be A-OK -okay up that way. Los Angeles, mostly sunny and warm. It's our latest forecast. And that's weather everywhere. Up next, the FDA gives the go-ahead for a powerful drug to be used to help women at risk for breast cancer. And in tonight's Eye on Technology, how Bay Area scientists are playing a key role aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. The Commute Alternative Map, with all the phone numbers you'll need to plan a less stressful commute. And it's free. Call this number for information. In world news tonight, Hurricane Mitch continues to lash the Caribbean and Central America. In southern Mexico, relentless heavy rain has caused flooding. More than 20,000 tourists have been evacuated from the resort area of Cancun. Tonight, Mitch's winds have slowed to about 75 miles an hour. The storm has claimed at least 32 lives. A young New Jersey woman who gave birth at her prom has been sentenced to 15 years in prison. Melissa Drexler apologized in court today, saying she is really, truly sorry. Drexler gave birth in a high school bathroom last year. The infant's body was found a short time later, stuffed in a trash can. Under the terms of her plea agreement, Drexler could be out of, of prison in less than three years. The FDA gives the okay for the drug tamoxifen to be used uh, to prevent breast cancer. It's the first time a drug has ever been approved to reduce a woman's risk of breast cancer. Now, at the same time, the FDA warns women to carefully weigh the benefits of the drug. Doctors say tamoxifen can cause life-threatening side effects. Now, in cooperation with the San Jose Mercury News, this is Eye on Technology. A bit of the Bay Area know-how in space tonight. Scientists at NASA Ames Research Center in Mountain View are managing three experiments on board the Space Shuttle Discovery. One of them involves the oyster toadfish. Scientists are hoping to find ways to prevent motion sickness by studying these creatures in space. Researchers will also be monitoring John Glenn to determine the effects of space on astronauts' sleep patterns. A software glitch is creating problems on Wall Street. It's putting out wrong information on the daily changes in the net asset values of some mutual funds. NASDAQ estimates about 200 to 500 funds each day may be affected by that glitch. No word on when officials will be able to fix the problem. Hi, everybody. I'm Drew Soisher. And when Channel 5 Eyewitness News continues, Raider star Eric Allen juggles in one of football's top honors. Intercepted. What a play. Eric Allen. Covering the South Bay, East Bay, the Peninsula, San Francisco, and the North Bay, Eyewitness News is everywhere. Tonight at 11 on Eyewitness News, Tom Cruise wins big today in a British court. Now someone has to pay big time. And with the election just around the corner, do you have enough information to make a good choice? We'll show you tonight on Five Report how to get it. It's official. UC Berkeley has banned its mascot, Oski the Bear, from this weekend's game. Yeah, it's punishment for a prank in which some Cal students stole Stanford's tree mascot, seen there with my Oski. In the meantime, flyers have been distributed in search of the tree. It's described as a six-foot-two tree with a green leafy complexion and a pointed head. <laughs> <laughs> a reward of $12.79 is being offered, but some Stanford alumni have reportedly offered a whopping $5,000 reward. Oh. In that case, here it is. <laughs> 5,000 bucks. This is, uh, this is kind of our uh, artist uh, rendition, our uh, police sketch. Looks smaller on TV. Yeah. It ain't 6'2", but hey. It, you know, he doesn't look happy, I have to no, say. No, he's upset. Yeah. And rightfully so. <laughs>
<laughs> now, where's my $5,000? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Raiders star Eric Allen was named the American Football Conference Defensive Player of the Month today. Allen intercepted one pass in each of Oakland's three October victories while leading the Raiders to the number one defensive ranking in the NFL. It's the first time in his career that Allen's won that particular award. It's a big thrill, you know. We, uh, we've accomplished a lot as a team, and, and it's always good when you can get uh, uh, personal achievements and personal goals accomplished, you know. My big thing is being consistent, and this says a whole lot in that, in that aspect, being consistent, not for a week or two, but for a whole month, and hopefully we can continue it. The Raiders are going to be in Seattle this weekend, so they're celebrating Halloween tonight instead. Get a handful, boy. Reach deep, 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 deep. Deep, 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 deep. There you go. Now that's a serious handful. The Raiders turned their team headquarters into a haunted house tonight for at-risk youngsters from the Police Activities League of Oakland. Looks like your typical Raider fan to me. <laughs> hey, it's fun. Having fun. It's Halloween, so I'm going to be as scary as I can for the kids. I told all my friends, and I was just so excited. And everyone was excited at my school, too. What did they say? They said, whoa, cool, you are so lucky. Indeed you are. There's so much more at stake than just another victory when the 49ers play the Packers on Sunday. The two teams have played 51 games in the all-time series. San Francisco won 25 times. Green Bay won 25 times, including the last four. And there's been one tie. Clearly. Um, when you're trying to win a championship every season and then, you know, so you're up the top of the league and then you get to the end of the season and one team you keep knocking up against and they keep knocking you down, you, you tend to remember that. And I think that that's going to be an important thing for coming into this week. People, people have been around. We know we've been, uh, we've been uh, knocked down by and we need to try to change that. Sharks are still looking for their first victory of the season tonight. They're tied with the Colorado Avalanche 1-1 late in the first period. Check this out. Earlier today, the Avalanche traded star forward Eric Lacroix to the Los Angeles Kings, which wouldn't be any big deal except for the fact that Lacroix's father is the general manager who dealt him. Anything <laughs> against Eric Lacroix, the human being, uh, the, the, the situation, the distraction was on the fact that he was the son of the GM, and when you're 1-5-1, one, one, there's always distraction coming out. <laughs> Eric Lacroix hasn't scored yet this season. He's too old to be grounded by his father. <laughs> but apparently, you're never too old to be traded. I'm Drew Soich. That is yeah. cold. Oh, blooded. Don't want to be He's not going to get any holiday no. presents from his Thanksgiving son. Thanksgiving will not be nice. That's business. All right, buddy. That's it for us. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again at 11. Now, sit back and enjoy tonight's edition of Evening Magazine.